Welcome everybody to a Catlia Rex Care Collab together with Tokyo World. I hope I said that correctly. My Green Pets and the channel named L A L 3 L. I don't know how to pronounce that, but there you go. I will put the names up on the screen. Thank you for joining us on this Care Collab and I appreciate the time that you take doing the videos together with me. So this is not my cat Leo Rex, but this is the light source of my cat Leo Rex. We're currently indoors in my dining room area. And we're going to go down a complete shelf to where she lives. And then we'll take her outside and have a closer look-see. But I wanted to show you where she lives. And she's not under the light directly because she is segregated. And I'll discuss that in a little bit more detail but first of all I did want to show you where she lives because it's a bit difficult to explain. So not directly under the light source that she would prefer. I have reasons. So let's go outside. Let's talk about her. Right so the reason she lives where she lives is because you can probably see that there is a lot of damage from previous insects and I had scale it was the fuzzy scale and the scale starts with a B and I don't remember the name, but it sounds very much like Bossa. <laughs> so if anybody knows that fuzzy scale, that name, please put it in the comments below because I always, always forget it. And she is a bit on the shiny side, yes, because she is under constant supervision and treatment with insecticidal soap. Now I got her from Schwerter in 2018. And when I first saw this orchid, I thought that is not a Rex. I don't think this looks like a Rex to me, but she is a seedling. So I gave them the benefit of the doubt. And then I observed her and she had an infestation, which I am trying to take care of. Let me show you right here that it is time to intervene again. Look at that, right there. So I'm glad we are doing this care collab because I wouldn't have looked at her until tomorrow. We'll deal with that right now. Okay, she was not on my rotor until tomorrow. And guess what? Care collabs have a lot of advantages and not just putting the information out there about the orchid. Wow, that could have been terrible for another 24 hours to catch it so late. But it's that white fuzzy stuff and it just won't go away. I gave her a good clean when I received her, as I do with all my orchids. But there was something in the Schwerter order that has manifested itself and seems to be a problem across the board for several of the orchids in that order. But anyway, so I've just taken some alcohol even though I have everything else with insecticidal soap, this area, it's okay. It's only down here a little bit. And that's fine to just do a topical quick touch up to get rid of what is immediately available. And that is why she's so shiny because I do this quite a lot. Once a week, I wipe her down for eventualities and tomorrow would have been her turn. But here we are, woohoo. Things work out for the best. So yeah, you can see all the damage from the previous years. This fuzzy scale has a toxic bite and will break down the cells. And that is why I'm thinking I do actually have a cat Leo Rex because my doubt previously, I always thought she was more of a vigorous orchid. I, when I got my Maxima, I didn't think that species were as finicky as they are, but the Rex is a little bit more finicky not as easy to cultivate in my setup and my environment. And then if you get a weak orchid that's getting attacked, it doesn't actually help. But just now I also wanted to show you, there's a new eye just bulging down here. Right there, I've got a new eye coming. So that's great news. Lots of new discoveries with this one. Well, what do you know? Who'd have thought, hey? Lots of new discoveries, right bang on the care collab. So yeah, my doubts were, this is not a Rex. 
and then she did a lot of nothing for all these years. I don't think she is happy in the root front. And we can now discuss whether it is my setup or whether it is the weakness of the orchid. I will not be able to tell you until I don't do a repot. And I'm not doing a repot until I don't have temperatures that are a little bit more conducive to her liking in this setup. This is self-watering with Lekka only. And she has been flushed a week ago. So the runoff water is in the mask from a week ago. I don't think that she is happy. I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to see that she is not happy at this point in time. Once again, is it because she's struggling to fight against bugs or is it the setup? I would like to say, <laughs> because it's me and my preferred setup, she's fighting against the bugs and struggling to survive. And secondly, I would like to say it's because she's a cat Leo Rex and they're not that easy to grow. And then you start to mess up and go against what the books say with a fast, wet, dry cycle. Then you're asking not necessarily for trouble, but you're adding challenges to your plant and how you want to grow her. Now, I'm relatively stubborn because I do believe that Cattleyas, no matter which ones, do well with Lekka and self-watering. I do not do a wet, dry cycle per se, but I sort of manipulate the wet dry cycle in such a way that the reservoir can go dry as long as the microfiber stays damp. And that's how I've been treating her throughout these winters. I did get these two new growths here, I would say at the end of 2019. And for a year, there's been no activity. She is pot bound, so that's good. I'm assuming that there are some healthy roots in there I can also see some new root growth coming, even though here you see the previous root is not happy. Here's another one out and about. So when the repot happens, I'm going to see what's going on in the pot as such, and then decide whether I'm going to give her bigger leka to make her environment a little bit more on the drier side, or maintain what she has right now based on what she has in the pot. So, what am I doing and why am I doing it, considering that uh, Cattleya rex have been assigned as an endangered species by the World Conservation Union. 1997, they were put on the endangered list, so why am I risking doing what I'm doing with a Cattleya rex? Well, it just remains the fact that I am convinced that any epiphytic orchid can grow in Lekka and self-watering, and I do believe I can make it happen. If I were to have had a healthy orchid from the start, I am sure we wouldn't be looking at her in the state that she is in. Considering if she was not happy in this setup, she would have died a long time ago. I'm talking September 2018, and we are now in March of 21. So if she had been absolutely, totally unhappy with where she's at, this we wouldn't be seeing her today. It's a battle between me making sure that she can grow without any more infestations happening and her managing to pull through and gather enough strength to come my way a little bit. It's a balancing act. So what does that mean temperature wise? Well, a minimum of 16 degrees Celsius and supposedly a maximum of 28 degrees Celsius. Based on her state, she always lives in my dining room, including in the summer. I'm still babying her. And my dining room this year did drop down to 14 degrees Celsius, which is not normal. I normally can handle 16 degrees Celsius, not using heaters, not using heat mats. That worked when I did my research on her. I thought, yep, I can do that. In the summer, 28 degrees, it, for me, it can go higher. It can all, go all the way up to 40 but she stays inside. I'm not exposing her to the radical hot winds and dry climate that I have outdoors. She has an opportunity to stay on the glass shelf indoors in the dining room area, right up by the window where she won't get direct sun, but she gets a lot, a lot of bright shade. And I keep her there all year round during the summer months until the angle of the sun changes 
and then I shall start to push her back a little bit shelf by shelf so she never gets any direct sun. You see, with the insecticidal soap on there, there's a rapeseed oil in it, and that's what makes the leaves shiny. I don't want any sun on these leaves at this point in time because that's just going to be scorched, burnt. But a lot of light is what she needs, otherwise she can't perform. And the reason that she is on the lower shelf is because of the scale infestation. Well, it's not really an infestation, but because she has a tendency to get scale, I leave her and keep her away from all the other orchids and make sure that at least she gets some light. I don't think it is enough light, but then she also has a rest period out in nature. And they do take a rest before anything else starts to kick off. Warmer temperatures will start to trigger the hormones in the orchid to start the growth again. I can't say that I have any warm temperatures right now. They don't drop below 16 degrees Celsius, but certainly not what I would consider warm. But something is triggering her to grow, and I'm really happy to see that it is much needed because everything on this orchid is now already one year old the way she is at this point. The growths having matured, nothing having happened in 2020. We need some action. So I'm very pleased to see that there is a swelling at the bottom of this growth. I have fertilized her just like I would fertilize any other orchid that I consider healthy. When she was in active growth, I gave her 300 parts per million of MSU fertilizer. And when she had absorbed the reservoir, I would flush through using the mask twice, just with plain RO water. And then I would put more fertilized water into the pot. For my climate and the fact that she is a weak and small seedling, I don't see her absorbing the reservoir fast. That is what the one thing that I have to be mindful of that during the summer when it's hot, I think there's more of an evaporation process going on than the orchid itself absorbing any of that water. So I have to be very careful that the reservoir doesn't dry out during the summer and then just you know, keep pumping in the fertilizer. Like last year when she wasn't doing anything, the majority of what she got was RO water and regular flushes. That's it. I didn't see the point of fertilizing while she's not actually growing. And a lot, a lot of vigilanteism on my part regarding reoccurring scale on this one. I do sometimes give her some seaweed as a little bit of backup into the reservoir once I've flushed her. Now I'm hoping to see that this new growth will actually come to something of substance and then I'll be back to fertilizing her properly. If when it comes to cleaning up her pot, I see that there's not many active roots in there, then I'm going to definitely pipe down on the fertilizer and not worry about putting any strength into any new growth, but letting the orchid grow of her own accord as best as she can just giving the occasional seaweed to help her along with a little bit of the hormones. I need to see more roots. There's something I've noticed on this one. She's a very reluctant grower on the root front. And again, we can say, well, that's probably the setup. She doesn't like it. And because I am me, I would say if she didn't like it, because of her lack in vigor, she would be dead by now. There is a little fine balancing act going on here. And I'm super, super keen on My Green Pet's channel with all his gorgeous Catlia Rexes that he's got going. And it just gives me a little bit of inspiration as to my goals, <laughs> where this one should be headed. I'm really pleased to have had this care collab together with Tokyo World with My Green Pets and LAL3L, as I feel that, you know, considering it's an endangered species, there should be more information out there about them and I know that My Green Pets does a fabulous job keeping information going about this gorgeous species on the web. And I'm glad that we have a variety of different orchids now to have a look-see and see how everybody else's are doing and what they're struggling with and what I'm struggling with. If I were to see a cat Leo Rex that I, from a nursery that I consider reputable and that could provide me with a healthy Rex, I would be very, very interested to get myself a second one a backup, simply because I do want a comparison in my own collection to see if I am right about this one being so weak, as opposed to it just objecting to my growing method. 
there's one thing to be said about this scale. It is very, very persistent and very, very destructive. And I think that is also a factor as to why she is not vigorous at this point in time. But we're working on it, we're working on it. And part of the Care Collab is to show what somebody does with a struggling orchid. And I hope that if you have a struggling Rex, maybe some of the things I've mentioned now resonate with you and we can share, compare and share notes. I look forward to seeing all the other videos. Again, thank you so very, very much, Tokyo World. My Green Pets, LAL3L, really appreciate you joining in on this Care Collab. And there are future updates, as there will be future updates on all our Rexes. I look forward to doing my report that I will film as and when the time is right weather-wise. This is not the time to be messing with a weak Rex. Really appreciate your company, really appreciate the Care Collab. If you happen to have a Rex and you see this video and would like to join in for future updates, please feel free to contact any of us. My email is always in the description below. So shoot me an email, let me know you have one and that you do videos and I will get you all the correspondence you need and I'll put you on the list for the up and coming updates. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so much for your time. Take care and stay safe. Bye.